and welcome to Modding Simple Recipes with Saver. Now we're going to be wanting to look in the creative menu at all the different dev blocks so we're not going to want any distractions. So what we're going to want to do is not deal with any zombies. So you can do this either one of two ways. You can either continue a current game that you have and go into your options which will be your standard and your modded and go down to enemy spawning under your modded options and disable zombies. Your other option is to create a creative game where those are already off so you don't have zombies running. Now I've already created one so I'm going to continue my creative mode world. And I've selected Nav as Gain to make it simple for me to find examples so that I can show you all, some of the different types of blocks. And again, these are the options if you select a creative mode world. So I'm going to click Start, and when we get in there, I'll be back. Alright guys, we're in my creative Navis Gain world, and I found a house that has a lot of the blocks that I'm looking for that I'd like to add to my recipes. Now you may notice some of these from the build that I'm currently doing with laser. For example, these like whitewashed painted stairs and the white blocks in the doors, as well as the window shutters. Now if you've selected to turn off zombies on a game that you're currently playing, then you'll need to take a few more steps. But for those who have created a creative mode world, you'll simply need to press I for your inventory and you'll already have this light bulb button up here that you can click on and go into the creative world. Now I had the, some words in there because I've been playing around with this, but normally when you press the creative light bulb button, all of the blocks available that the devs use to create POIs are all here as well as a lot of loot items. So pretty much everything in the game that you can find, you can find here. Now, if you've selected to turn off zombies in your world, then what you'll have to do is press F1 to get into the console, and you'll have to select CM and press Enter. And you'll see that it says Creative Menu On. Now, one of the other advantages to going into a creative mode world is that God Mode is already turned on for you. So when you press G, all you have to do is press the spacebar, and you're able to fly. Now this makes building in creative mode very, very easy, because you don't have to worry about nerd pulling up to be able to reach certain places. So it makes it very easy to build. But if you've selected to simply turn zombies off in a current game that you're playing, then as I said, you would need to turn on the debug menu by going into the console, typing in DM and pressing enter. And then you'll have the same features as what we have here in creative mode. Now, the blue blocks that we're looking at are like blue painted wood. And the closest thing that I can think of that comes to that, as far as blocks that we have available to us currently, is this redwood block, which is 15 wood and one chrysanthemum. But let's look at the blocks that are in blue that we want to use. So the easiest way to go about this would be to just type in blue, and that'll bring up all of the blue items in the game. Pretty cool, huh? So what, let, what we want to do is grab one of each of these blocks, because they all look very similar, but they all have different names. So let's bring them all into our hotbar, and play around with these to see what the differences are. So I'm just going to find a spot here. Now this first one, let's look at it. It's Siding Blue Plaster Baseboard Block. Now it looks the same, but when you rotate it, you'll see that there's a green wallpaper side with wood trim on the top and the bottom. Our second one is called Siding Blue Plaster Middle Block. So when we rotate that, it has just a plain green wallpaper. Our third block 
is sighting blue plaster top block. So if we rotate that one, then you'll see it's got the same green wallpaper, but wood trim just at the very top. Then our last block is siding blue old wood block. So if we rotate that, we'll see that it has a wood block for one of the sides. Now you want to make sure you do this for every block that you're considering playing with because a lot of the blocks all have different sides to them. For example, one of the blocks that I'm using in my build with laser blade is the one that looks like it has little angels on it. Now to make sure that I get the correct one, oh I'm misspelling it, I'm going to type concrete trim and you'll see that there are two different ones. So I'm going to grab both of those. Now to make sure that I get the correct one, I want to do the same thing. I want to rotate the blocks. Now if you see the second one, no matter which way I rotate it, it's always the same. And I find that the simplest to work with in the build that I'm currently doing. So you want to be careful and make sure you correct, select the correct block. Otherwise you'll have to mod in the recipe yet again. Because this first one, as you see, it has just a plain side to it. And then this one has the angels on all the sides. Okay, let's say for our example, we want the blue wood block that has the wood on the front. So we go into creative, we'll type in blue, and that one was siding blue old wood block. So if we look at it here in the creative menu, you'll see that there are numbers attached to the front of the name of each block. You'll want to write those down because it will make finding the recipes and the names, like the proper name of the block in the XML, much easier. It is called siding blue old wood block here, but it, will, it could have a slightly different name in the XMLs. So make sure you write that number down. And because it's closest to the red wood block that we mentioned earlier, we want to find that as well. So red wood block is 952. So write that down as well. Once you've found the blocks that you want to use, you want to make sure that you have a program that can edit the XMLs that you'd like to make recipes for. I recommend Notepad++. It's a free program and you can find it at notepad-plus-plus.org and simply click on the download link and that'll take you to the current version where you can select either 32-bit or 64-bit depending on your computer. Once you've got that installed, you'll want to locate where your files are. Mine are located on my D drive under Steam, Steam Apps, Common, 7 Days to Die, Data and Config. And you'll see that the Recipes XML is here. But you're first going to want to go into your blocks. Now if you open it just by double clicking, it's going to bring it up in a HTML-like setting. So what you'll want to do is actually right click and select Edit with Notepad++. And that's the program that you've just installed. And it brings it up like this. So once you're in the Blocks XML, you're going to want to find what the proper name of your block is. Because what it is represented as in the game isn't the same as what it is here. Uh, they have a tendency to put all of the words together and capitalize all of the words following the very first word. It's a fairly common W3C HTML coding standard. Um, so they, they've used that here for all of these. So you'll want to make sure that you have this name for this block. Once you've found that, then you can open up your recipes XML and we're going to find what we think is the most similar type of block to the one that we'd like to create. In this instance, it was the red wood block. So the easiest way to do that is to press Control F and type in redwood. 
Now, it, if you are not at the very beginning of the page, then it's going to just take you to the very next one. So there we go. Here's the recipe for the redwood block, just like we saw in our inventory. It takes one chrysanthemum plant and 15 wood. So what you're gonna wanna do is highlight this recipe. And you wanna make sure that you get the beginning of where the recipe starts and where the recipe ends. So once you've got that highlighted, right click and press copy. And the easiest way I've found to organize my recipes is to put them at the very end so that I know which ones are mine and which ones were already included. Now, you're going to want to make sure that you put this in between where the last recipe is and where all of the recipes for the document ends. And I'll show you at the very beginning, you'll see here, this is the start of recipes, which is different than a singular recipe. So this document starts with recipes, as I said, and ends with recipes. Now, if you don't put it before this location, you're going to break the XML, and when you go into your game, you're not going to be able to get any recipes to come up whatsoever. So I'd recommend putting in a few spaces to give yourself room to put your recipe. Now you can right-click and paste. Now, we want to go back to blocks and select the name of the block that we want to create and we're going to replace redwood block with that name. Now we'd also like to replace this chrysanthemum plant. Now we can use blueberries or we could use snowberries even, but we had discussed earlier about using blueberries. So let's type in blueberry so that we can make sure that we find the proper name of the ingredient that we'd like to use. Now if you look, it brings up the recipe for blueberry pie. And the name for the ingredient that we want is actually blueberries. So let's select it and copy it. And then go back down to the recipe that we're working on. And instead of having chrysanthemum plant, we're going to replace that with blueberries. And that's it. All you have to do then is save it. So we've got our siding blue old wood block using wood and blueberries to create a dev block that we'd like to use ourselves. So when we go into our game, it will now come up in our inventory when we search through all the different types of blocks we can create and we'll be able to create it right there. So to show you, I'll bring up the game and we'll take a look. So I'll be right back. Okay guys, I've gone into a regular game now so that I can show you that the blue siding should now come up when we look in our inventory. So if we press I and type in blue, siding blue old wood block will now come up. And as you can see, it requires one blueberry and 15 wood. So let's craft one. And that should only take another second. And there we go. So let's put that in our hot bar and place it to make sure that that is the block that we were looking for. Look at that. Yep, and it's got the wood siding right there. Perfect. Now there's some, some other th things that you'll want to keep in mind when you're creating recipes. Things like things that are required to be created in the forge or on the workbench or in the chemistry station. So let's find an example of something that we might want to create in one of those. So I'll be right back. Alrighty guys, we're back. And this is one of the blocks that I have created for mine and Lasers game. And um, it looks like a white painted brick sort of um, type of block. So if we go in here and type in brick, 
you'll see that the only ones that we have available are like brick pavers, regular bricks, and decayed brick, but not the whitewash type of brick. So let's look in the creative menu and try to find that block. And here we go, we've got several different types of examples. So let's empty out our hot bar that we were using before. And grab some of these so that we can test them to see which one is the, going to be the correct one that we want to use. So to make things easy, I'm just going to select them all in order. That way we know we've got them all covered. So that's all of the white painted looking type blocks. All right. So the first one, we're going to rotate that. And as you can see, it's sort of got a shiny tile. Well, due to the shadows, that might be difficult to see. So let's try placing them over here. There we go. So now that we've got it rotated, you can kind of see it a little bit better. Sorry about the background noise, but um, this is one of the first places that I found a block that uh, I could use in as an example. So that's the first block. And the second block, we're going to rotate. And it looks like it's the same on all of the sides. Our next block, we'll rotate. And that one has a slightly different side. The next block, Now this is the plain drywall, and this is drywall with trim on top and bottom, and that one has the shinier tiles. And our last example has like a blue concrete face on one side. Now to, depending on the type of build that you're making, you might want one with a different side. But for this example, I'm going to select the second block that has the same faces on all of its side. So the second block is actually called brick painted block. So let's go back to our XMLs and find that. But first, let's make sure that we've got the number 275, just to make it easy on ourselves. Okay, so I'll see you in the XML. guys we're back into our blocks XML now the closest block that we could find to the white painted brick would be a brick block so let's look and see if we can find a brick block now we've got brick decayed block there's probably going to be several so probably what we want to do is go into recipes and see if we can find a recipe that already exists so we can use it as an example so let's look for brick so your basic brick block is created in the forge and requires a unit of stone and a unit of clay. And again, that's how the ingredients work in the forge. You can only use the ingredients that are in the forge. So now that we've got an example such as the brick block, let's go back into our blocks and make sure that we have the proper name for the white painted one that we want to use and get that ready. So that was 275 when we looked in the creative menu. Now this one is a texture value so that's not the correct one. This one is 1275. So let's scroll up to the beginning. Now you can either search for it manually or you can use the find like we do here. But it would need to be towards the beginning and as I said sometimes that can end up being a texture value. So this is the correct block that we want to use so now that we've got that highlighted we're ready to go. Okay so we're going to use our brick block as an example so let's highlight the recipe for a regular brick block and then copy that and just like we did for the last recipe for our blue wood block, 
let's go to the bottom of the page so that we can keep our recipes separate from the ones that are already included. And again, make sure you place it above where all of the recipes end for the document. So we're going to left click there and press enter a few times to give ourselves some room and paste it. And we've already located the proper name for the block that we're trying to create a recipe for, so we're going to highlight and copy just like we did before and do exactly the same thing. Replace the name brick block with brick painted block. And we're going to keep these values the same. Count is going to equal run, the craft area is going to equal a forge, and the material base is going to equal true and it's going to have the exact same type of ingredients that a regular block would for our bricks. So this one is done. It's going to use the same amount of stone and the same amount of clay. So all you need to do then is save and then when you go back in it'll come up in your inventory and inside the forge. So let's go take a look. Alrighty guys, so we're back in our game and I've set up a forge here and I've got it melting up the materials that we're going to need to make our brick painted block with. So I'm waiting for enough of this to be done and again the recipe required an anvil and as you can see it actually is showing up here now in our recipes. So it looks like we've got the ingredients that we need. We needed stone and clay. So let's craft one. And it's going to take the same amount of time as the regular brick blocks do. Just like this. So we'll give that a few seconds. Almost there. And there we go. All right, now let's place it to ensure that this is the correct block. And it is. Look at that. Correct block with all of the same sides exactly the way that we wanted. Okay, guys. I found something else that I thought we could use as, as an example. Um, I'm really fond of these black iron railings here, um, but this isn't something that's available to us to create. So if you go into the creative menu, let's look for these railings. And here they are, black iron railings, and the number is 723. Now because they're made of iron, probably the closest recipe would be iron bars which you would make in the forge. But as we discussed before, if you want to create anything in the forge, you can only use the ingredients that are available in the forge. But the railings that we want to create are actually black. So I thought, what if we created bars using coal to make them black? But because we can't add coal as an ingredient, we would need to do that elsewhere. So this might be a good example for something we can craft in the workbench. We can take iron bars that we've created in the forge and then add coal to it and craft that in the workbench. So let's go take a look at the XMLs about how we can do that. So we'll be right back. Okay guys, we're back into our XMLs. Now we want to craft a recipe using the iron bars and coal to create the black iron railings. So we're going to want to find the iron bar recipe. And as I discussed previously, a lot of the names or the proper names of these blocks have all of the words put together without spaces and typically the second and words following are all capitalized. So most likely the easiest way for us to do this would be to bring up control F to bring up the find window and type in iron bars. Let's see. Here we go. Here's the recipe for iron bars, which asks for the forge, the anvil, and it's material based using units of clay and units of iron. 
but we said that we want to make them black by using coal. So we're going to have to find a recipe using the workbench, for example, because it makes sense to me to craft something like that in the workbench. You'd take the iron bars and paint them black. That's not something you would do inside your backpack. So let's use this recipe as an example. So let's highlight that and copy it. And then we're going to go to the bottom of our document, just like we've done with the blue old wood block and the brick painted block. And again, make sure you're above this line where it's saying that it's the end of all the recipes in this document. So left click, create some spaces for ourselves so we have room for the recipe to go. And we're going to paste that. Now we're going to need to find the proper name of the black iron railings so that we can include that for the recipe name. So let's go into our blocks. And we said that that was number 723. So you can either scroll up or you can use the search option. I'm just going to try and quickly scroll here real quick. And there we go. Railing black sheet. So let's highlight this and copy. Now we go back into our recipes and we replace the recipe name. Okay, so that is going to be railing black sheet and the count is currently one in the workbench. Now we want to change the ingredients for that as well because we want this to be iron bars. Now we already know that the proper name for iron bars is iron with a capital B. And see, it even shows you uh, an example because it's been seen previously in the document. Okay, so now we can just click off of that. Now, we said we wanted to use coal, so let's make sure we have the proper name for that. So let's put that in our search and find it. Yep, it's just coal, all lowercase letters. So that makes it easy. So we'll just highlight it and copy it. Go back to our recipe that we're working on and replace this ingredient. Now, with the way that the counts currently stand, to make one railing black sheet, you'd need 20 iron bars and three coal, so we want to adjust that. So for this, we'd want it to be one iron bar, maybe one coal. But perhaps you think that using one coal for every iron bar seems like a lot. If that's the case, then you can adjust it. Let's say, for example, you want to be able to make 10 of these railing black sheets with just one piece of coal. So you'd want to change the counts to reflect that. So to make 10 railings, like so, you'd want to adjust that number and also the count as well. Otherwise, to make 10 railings, you'd only need one iron bar and one coal. So let's adjust that as well. So for every 10 iron bars and one piece of coal, you'll get 10 railing black sheets. So now that we've got that done, let's save. And then we can go back into our game and test and see if it works. Now, one thing I didn't mention before was that each time you change the XML, you need to not only completely quit out of your game, but also seven days to die program altogether. So we want to make sure that we quit and then we can go back into Steam and bring up seven days to die again. That way it loads the brand new saved XML that we just made adjustments to. Because each time it loads the block textures and everything. So when I'm back in the game for us to test our new recipe, I'll be right back. Alrighty guys, so we're back in our game and let's see if our recipe worked. So let's go into our inventory. Let's type in black and there you go, black iron railing and it's showing the workbench icon just like we need. So we can now go into our forge. And let's make some iron bars. Now the recipe we created required there to be 10, but we need some uh, scrap iron in there. So let's get some of that melted up and then we'll be right back. Alrighty guys, we're back. 
So our forge has been cooking up and we've got our 10 iron bars and our one lump of coal. And as you can see, there's a recipe saying that it requires a workbench. So let's go into the workbench. Now you can either go into recipes and have it bring up all the things that you can make, or you could just type in the black iron railing. So let's craft. And it says exactly how we created the recipe, 10 iron bars and one lump of coal. There we go. Like that. So let's place them. Beautiful. Look at that. See, it's just that easy. So I had another idea for us to use uh, for, as an example for the chemistry station. Um, there's a lot of recipes that require bottled water and can only be made in the campfire. But it makes sense to me that we'd be able to make other things in the chemistry station as well with the murky water. So for example, your basic golden rod tea. Both of these require a campfire, but let's make a recipe so that we can make golden rod tea with murky water and the chemistry station. So let's go back to our XMLs. Hi guys, and we're back in our XMLs. So we want to create a recipe for goldenrod tea using murky water in the chemistry station. So let's see if we can find the normal recipe for goldenrod tea. Okay, here's the regular recipe for goldenrod tea. To make one goldenrod, you craft it in the campfire and you must have a cooking pot and it requires goldenrod plant and bottled water, but we'd like to use murky water. Now, if we take a look down here to this recipe for grain alcohol, it's made in the chemistry station with cornmeal and they call murky water bottled river water. So we wanna keep this in mind. But let's start with this recipe here. So let's highlight it and copy it. Go down to the bottom of our recipes where we've been placing all of our crafted recipes. We're gonna paste that. Now we're gonna to wanna to change the craft area as well as one of the ingredients. So let's go back and let's grab this chemistry station for the craft area. So let's highlight it, copy, go back down to the recipe that we're working on, and we're gonna change campfire to chemistry station. Now, since we don't need a craft tool in the chemistry station, we're just going to get rid of all of this before the greater than sign and we wanna change bottled water to murky water. So let's go back up to the other recipe that we were looking at. And we saw down here, the bottled river water. So if you have trouble finding murky water, that's why it's called bottled river water. So you can see it up here for the glue as well that's also made in the chemistry station. So now that we've got the name of the murky water that we want, let's go down here and change bottled water to bottled river water. Now what you could do if you wanted to, because other recipes that are made in the chemistry station tend to take less ingredients. So let's say um, for every, let's say every three goldenrod teas, you need one goldenrod plant and three murky waters. So a one golden rod plant would be concentrated in the chemistry station, for example. So if that's what you'd like to do, go ahead and change that or use other, any other numbers that you would like to use for your recipe. But I'm gonna go with three for now. So let's save that. And then I'll meet you back in our game where we're gonna test our recipe. So I'll see you in a moment. Alrighty guys, we're back in our game. So let's go into the chemistry station. And you'll see that the very first recipe is goldenrod tea that requires the bottled murky water. And you'll see it takes one goldenrod flour and three murky water. Now I know that this says one, but it will actually re 
result in giving us three golden rod tees. This is basically making a badge. And it was the same way when we made the black iron railing in the um, uh, workbench. So if we just click on one, you'll see down here in the craft window that you're going to get three. And it's only going to take about 20 seconds, so that's not very long at all. And then we'll have our golden rod tea that we made in the chemistry station. So we'll just give that a few more seconds. And there we go, look! Three golden rod tea that we had crafted in the chemistry station. Look at that! Excellent! So that's all there is to it. So I showed you how to make several different kinds of blocks using all different kinds of ingredients and using several of the different craft stations and it would be similar if you were to craft something in the cement mixer or in the campfire uh, if you were to make recipes for those. So I hope that was informative and you enjoyed this tutorial. If you've got any questions please feel free to post those in the comments um, underneath the video and if you liked it please give it a like and be sure to share it with your friends so that they can craft recipes as well. So I hope this keeps you busy until A16 comes and we have the new painting tool. We'll see what kind of changes come up with the recipes then in the XMLs. But until then, bye!